Hey, folks, welcome to In the Money Stocks.com's intraday analysis video brought to you by the creators of proprietary price, pattern, and time methodology. Learn the PPT strategies and profit for life. My name is Gareth Soloway. Let's get started on this Wednesday, August 27th, 2014. Right now, markets are flat to slightly positive. S&P's up a quarter point. Dow's up 13 points. NASDAQ is up just shy of one point on the day. So again, very, very quiet market action at this point, which is somewhat expected as we inch towards the holiday weekend. Uh, volume, this is usually the lightest week of the year in total because everyone's on vacation away with the kids before the kids go back to school traders take off uh it's the doldrums late summer and then su september once september gets underway you'll see a back to normal type event and again it's interesting in this market and this is just something i'm going to point out the last couple days right we've been very much sideways to flat on the market and in this volume environment usually the markets have very good success of going up so again, I don't know if I should make a mountain out of a molehill yet at this point or not, but it is something that's catching my eye. Just again, if you look at the SPY, look at the volume today, 22 million. I mean, this market could float up so easily on this volume, yet it's not. Now, they are holding the S&P above 2,000, which was a prediction I made weeks ago that they would get the market above 2,000 by the holiday weekend. NASDAQ still above 4,500, trading at 4,570, and the S&P is above 17,000. So, remember, they want to pump this market into that holiday, and sure enough, so far, they've kept it right in line here. I still would say my, my bias for the next couple days into the weekend is neutral to positive. I just, again, don't foresee a tank in the market. Like, I mean, could you have a pause day? Sure, like today. But I don't foresee big sell-offs unless we get something out of Russia right before the weekend. That could be one of the major detriments. Aside from that, I don't see much else that could do it. Okay? All right, so that's what we have going on there on the markets, guys, just to keep you fully informed. Uh, let me just look at a couple other charts out there that are moving today. Obviously, SWHC, uh, which is Smith & Wesson, taking a beating, although it is coming off of its lows. And again, this company has really taken a tumble from its recent highs. If you go to the daily chart, stock was a $17 stock, and look at that. I mean, this had this huge gap down, and then ever since then, it went right to the 200, bounced to the 20 down further, bounced, and then gapping down today. Now, I will say this is that you actually did hit a short-term support level on this stock right here at the 1125 level or so. So again, right around the lows of the day, you hit some support. I do actually think it's going to go probably a little bit lower. What I'm going to start to look for, folks, and again, this actually is a good area right here too, but I'm going to start looking for just a little bit more downside, minor downside into this area right here. I right, see this lower level right here. That's probably going to be a longer-term buying opportunity if this one isn't already setting up to be a decent one. Uh, I'm going to give it a little room to breathe at least three days. I use the three-day rule, which is, again, stating that when you have a big type of move out of a stock on news, it takes three days for margin calls to get taken care of, institutions to buy or dump, depending on what they want to do, and then it gets back to kind of normal action. So that should happen by next Monday, and we can reevaluate it. But again, just so you guys are aware, support is currently right here, 1125. And then you have more support right down here. We'll call it at the uh, approximate $10.50 level as well. All right, those are your two big levels on SWSC. Now, a couple other stocks. Let's take a look. Number one, Apple. Apple is moving nicely higher today. I've been very patient on Apple. All right, so again, I've talked about shorting it for quite some time, and I said to you guys very clearly, I said, listen, Apple will be a short at some point, but let's let it get a little bit higher here because the light volume, this is a leading stock. Most likely, it's going to try to carry the markets up. And sure enough, you're seeing that today. So Apple back up a dollar. We're nearing the highs from just a couple days ago. I think it's going to go personally to about 103 to 105. That's what I'm expecting. I'm expecting a top out around 103 to 105 in that range. As soon as I see the signal in that range, I'm going to pull the trigger on a short. Okay, so just be aware of that, guys. And right now, again, that is what I'm looking at. Okay. Uh, let me see what else we have here on the charts as I scan through. Uh, looking at U.S. Steel. U.S. Steel actually is coming back after early morning selling. And again, the stock's still down, but this is still in the higher range. Now, I do have a key level on this stock as well that I'm going to give to you guys right now. All right, if you do, take, take a look at your weekly chart. This is your weekly, right? And what you can see here on your weekly is very, very clear uh, resistance coming into play right here. 
and right here, all right, and even piercing it right here. So you know you're hitting resistance, but these upper two lines are the ones that are really drawing my attention, and I'm going to explain why. All right, first of all, there's a pivot low, and then multiple lows right along this upper one, and this is right above $40, so right around 40 and a half, give or take a, bit, a little bit in that range. The other thing that I think is warranted to mention, and one of the reasons why this level draws my attention so much just above 40, and by the way, we're not there yet, so you got to get up there, but one of the reasons is because if you go to the monthly chart, look at this, what's there at, at that same price point? the 200 moving average. So according to what I'm seeing here, it makes sense to me that you have levels on the chart and then you have a major moving average on the monthly chart. So this should be a stopping point on the monthly when it gets above 40. We're going to call 40 and a half, but again, it could be give or take 25 cents or so in that range. All right, again, you can see right here, the 200 right over here shows us at 40.51. All right, so that's another one I wanted to point out to you guys. Um, let's take a look at some of the stocks I've been watching to see how the setups are forming. Let's flip back to the daily. Uh, Boeing, looking at Boeing today. Boeing's a little bit weaker. I've really been looking on Boeing for a consecutive move up into the 200. And the 200, to me, is where that's where the short starts to get attractive. All right, if you look right here, you have a little bit of a pivot right there. You have these little pivot highs. So this area right here on Boeing is really your area. And I'm going to call that at 130. So if you can get a pierce early next week of 130, and remember markets are closed on Monday, so uh, maybe Tuesday or Wednesday, if you can get a pierce of 130 on Boeing, I think it's actually a short at that level. Now, the only thing I would not want to see on this, and again, this is for people that understand the methodology, you do not want to see consolidation here and a bull flag build. You'd rather see this over the next couple days go right into that with only today being a pullback pause day. All right, and UTX was another one I've been keeping my eye on. This one's looking less and less likely as a play. I was looking for this to surge up and get to the 200 because you had a bid, a bid line right here, a resistance point, pivot, pivot, and then the 200 right there. But that's not looking like, like it's going to be that ripe at this stage of the game as well. Okay, uh, commodity land, let's quickly talk about commodities. Gold today is seeing a minor amount of upside, but only up four cents. Again, that's basically flat. Silver today is same thing, barely up on the day, kind of holding steady here. And then oil, oil down another 10 cents today. And oil just continues to make a bearish consolidation. Got to be in, in the point of, of thought that oil is going to go lower. All right, based on the chart pattern forming the 20 sloping into price. If we want to talk about corn today, corn again, and this is so interesting on corn. So every day we're seeing early morning selling. It's if someone's selling off and maybe covering uh, or selling a position, you know, getting out of something. And then it's so interesting because later in the day it floats back up. Like look at yesterday. Look at that move up, and then today was lower here, and now it's starting to make a push back up towards the flat line, only down $0.09 cents on the day, and yesterday only ended down about $0.10. Cents. So you're still seeing weakness in corn, but it still appears to me, and you can see it even here, early morning selling and then a bid back up. All right, and if we go back to some of these, here's another day. Early morning selling, flatlining midday, and then into the end of the day, good push up. So there's definitely something going on there. Uh, I, I don't know if I can pinpoint exactly what it is just yet, but if we go to the daily chart, I'm still in the camp that you're putting in some sort of longer-term bottom on this because you haven't taken out the fake print low here or the real low right here. Even though you've trailed off a little bit, it's still holding in this range. Now, what you want to see for the big breakout is a takeout Cetus gap fill, which you hit right there and you pulled back on. When you take that out, you're going to zoom, first of all, right to the 50, and if you blow through the 50, then honestly, you're not stopping until you get up here to about 30 bucks. So it's definitely something to pay attention to, um, something that I'm watching very, very closely here. A couple other things, SGG, which is sugar. Sugar had a big move yesterday. It popped early today and then pulled back. But this is also starting to make it look like, see how it's all this violent kind of big down, big up moves? That's the beginning of a bottom. It needs to form better, but that is something you want to pay attention to when you see that on the chart. Another chart that I'm watching, TBT. Uh, TBT had this nice high volume reversal kind of bounce and now it's trading back into those lows. I am watching very closely to see if this low holds or not on the TBT. TBT is the 20-year the uh, treasury. And this basically tells you, if this is up or down, it tells you what rates are doing. Up would be rates are going up. And down, rates would be going down on the 10-year, on the 20-year, etc. All right, so just some things there. Uh, Amazon today, let's take a look at Amazon. Was up nicely, but stalling out. Now just up 22 cents on the day. You can see the daily chart was as high as here. And it pulled back. So that looks like it's kind of reaching its zenith, if you will, in the short term. And J.P. Morgan, always a good one to look at, continues to remain flat on the day, but that's had a big, big move. Uh, just got above this little pivot top a few days ago. I would say it has a decent chance over the next few days to maybe go as high as 61. So watch for that, especially if the market gets a bid. You know this is going to be one of the leaders there. 
All right, guys, I think that's enough. Just giving you some good ideas going forward here at InTheMoneyStocks.com. I'm going to be entering more trades this afternoon, so come join us here at InTheMoneyStocks.com. Take the seven-day free trial, seven days free, to the Research Center. Join us. Prepare yourself for uh, September. September where the volatility reemerges, where the profits go crazy. So come join us again at InTheMoneyStocks.com. Take